My name is Kevin Cameron, and I want to talk about the hard life of an exhaust valve. Now, <clears throat> this CBR600RR engine has eight exhaust valves. They're quite small. They're 22 millimeters in diameter. All of the valves are exposed to combustion heat, but the exhaust valve is heated twice because when it opens and exhaust gas begins to flow out from under it, it's not only heated on its top of its head, but the back side of it is heated as well by the exhaust gas whose temperature can be as high as 1700 degrees. In the early days of motorcycle race tuning, one of the things that the engineers would do is to run an engine without an exhaust pipe on it and look up the port to see if the valve was glowing red hot. So that's why I say the hard life of an exhaust valve, heated from both surfaces, heated on top from combustion itself, and then heated on the back as well during the exhaust release process, this thing gets really hot. The hotter it gets, the more likely it is to heat the incoming fresh charge for the next combustion cycle enough that when the piston heats it further by compressing it, that after the spark lights it and it's compressed further by the expanding flame kernel, some part of the unburned gas around the outside, particularly heated by the exhaust valve, will detonate or knock. This engine looks like it has never detonated in its life, and that's one of the reasons that the ECU is there. Its digital logic has a protective function. Because this valve is small, the distance from the hottest part of it to the valve seat, the part that seals against the seat in the head, it's very short, so heat can flow from the center of the valve out to the seat, which is water-cooled. This is a water-cooled engine. All of these passages have water circulating through them at 195 degrees Fahrenheit. In exhaust valve terms, that's ice cold. But the bigger you make an engine, bigger pistons, bigger valves, the distance that heat has to flow out of the valve to the cooler seat becomes larger and the valve operates hotter. So that in the case of large air-cooled aircraft engines, exhaust valves end up looking like this. This is a sodium-cooled valve from an R2800 radial engine. The stem is hollow, the head is hollow. It has two-thirds filled with sodium. At operating temperature, the sodium becomes a liquid. The opening and closing of the valve causes that liquid to slosh back and forth, carrying heat away from the hot head of the valve down the stem to cooler conditions. So we're really fortunate in sport bike engines that their exhaust valves are such cute little guys because their short heat path means that their survival is pretty well guaranteed. In bigger engines, sometimes you'll see chunks taken out of the head of the exhaust valve. What's happened is a crumb of carbon has held the valve open slightly leakage of combustion gas past the valve, heats it way up, and a flame channel develops. Looks like somebody had gone after the poor valve with the torch. But in an air-cooled engine, life is very hard. In a water-cooled engine, it's more of a vacation.